Now, there are some scholars in the Jesus Seminar that claim the Apostle Paul is the one who invented the Jesus of faith. And what they mean by this is that Paul made up the story that Jesus was God. And before that, it had never been said. But Dr. Habermas presents the historical facts that clearly reveal that Paul did not invent Christianity or the Christ of the Christian faith. Listen. Now, Paul has said a couple of important things. He said, I delivered what I received, and I like these words, as of first importance. Paul said, this is basically the most important thing I can preach to you. And of course, the first two verses, he said, if you accept it, you're saved. If not, you're not. So we're right here at the center. But then he says, it's not mine. So Paul's not the inventor. Now, is this what we see? Does the passage give evidence that Paul, while passing it on, really got it from somebody else? In other words, Paul's repeating it, but it's not really his material. Now, when we look at these words, we'll see several indications that this does not come from Paul. For example, Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that he was buried. Paul never again uses those words, and he never again, whenever he defines the gospel, he always includes, as I said last week, the deity of Christ, the death, and the resurrection. He never again adds burial. So there's some non-Pauline words here. Another indication, Peter's name is Cephas. Now, Paul does refer to Peter as Cephas, but Peter is better known as Peter, and Jeremias, the German New Testament scholar, thinks that this is one indication that there may be an Aramaic original. Uh, Lapid, the the uh, conservative uh, Jewish New Testament scholar has said there are other signs here that this is passing on tradition. For example, what's called the triple ho t clause. English students will recognize that as and, and, and. Paul doesn't come up for air until he gets this long sentence out. Died for our sins according to the scriptures, and he was buried, and he, he was raised, and he appeared. And uh, uh, Dr. Lapid tells us that is a means of Hebrew narration. The words delivered and received are technical words for passing on tradition. Paul says it again in 1 Corinthians 11 concerning the Lord's Supper, delivered and received. So these are just, what, three or four indications that this material is not Paul's. Now, how do you recognize a creed or a tradition? Scholars have pointed out that this reads in two nice columns, and it's not English poetry that rhymes real nicely. But it reads like first century, a first century Jewish audience where it's regimented. And you can see that when he appeared, Jesus appears to an individual, Peter, then to a group, the twelve, then to five hundred at once. Then he appears to James, another individual, then he appears to another group. There's some order to this, and it's, it's arranged like a catechism. And I made the point last week, perhaps 90% of Palestinians, are, are the, the uh, Jews in that area, were not... Uh, readers. They were not literate. And how do you give the heart of your message of first importance to people that don't read? You say it in a form where they can memorize it and repeat it back. That is the nature of these creedal passages. And what we have here is Paul passing on the heart of his message, he said, what I preached when I came. And he said, folks, it's not even mine. So I think we need to return to several things here. The importance of this early message some data we have. We've got that timeline going all the way back to Jesus in 30 AD. It's not Paul's. And so Paul is not the originator in the New Testament message. 1 Corinthians 15, 11, once again, uh, we referred to this last week. Paul says, whether then it was I or they, this is what we preach, and this is what you believed. The we there is the apostles. He's saying, hear it from them, hear it from me. We're preaching the same message concerning what? The gospel and the resurrection appearances in, in general. What Paul says is, I didn't make this up. I got it from somebody else. I deliver to you. That's what, what I also received. Now look at verse 11. Whether then it was I or they, this is what we preach, and this is what you believed. I think what Paul is saying here is, ask the disciples. They'll give you the same thing I'm giving you. Ask me. I'll tell you. Now, what is this message? Just look at the previous verses. It's the gospel, and in particular, he's been talking about the appearances here. He's saying, I've talked to them. They've got the same message I have. They've talked to me. They commend me. You can go back and look at Galatians 2. This is why we are at a, at a very special point in history where you can almost reach out and 
and see what Paul's saying and touch his message. It's linked to time, space, history. It's words on a page. He's an accredited messenger. We've got ourselves a timeline. And folks, it's not an evangelical that came up with this timeline. This is largely developed in critical non-evangelical theology. I think by using some of these methods, we see that we're on very firm grounds here regarding the very heart of our faith, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ.